this is Dr. Kat Slees from Central New Mexico Community College. We're reaching the end of our discussion of the respiratory system. This is our second to last video. In video U, I'm going to focus on the receptors involved in our breathing and the control of our breathing. In the previous video, we looked at the brain centers that can change how deep we breathe and how fast we breathe. So this time we need to look at receptors in particular that communicate with these brain centers. And so we're going to look at irritant and stretch receptors, as well as our central and peripheral chemoreceptors. We, you might recall from the blood vessel chapter that we mentioned these chemoreceptors there along with the baroreceptors. And I said we will come back to those chemoreceptors in the respiratory system, so here we are. We also need to mention the higher brain centers that can actually take over um, instead of our medullary and pontine respiratory centers. In our lungs, we have receptors that are sensitive to all kinds of irritating chemicals in the environment. These receptors detect these irritants and they send their signals via our vagus nerve to our respiratory centers in the medulla and in the pons. Consequently, we're going to see reactions such as the coughing and the sneezing that we typically see happening um, in response to these irritants. We also have stretch receptors in our lungs and they're primarily going to protect our lungs from overinflating. So by this I mean the following. If our stretch receptors in the lungs are stimulated because our lungs are inflating too much, once again, the vagus nerves is going to send signals that are inhibitory to our dorsal respiratory group. And that is therefore going to stop us from inhaling more air and begin exp expiring air. We refer to this as the inflation reflex or the herring Breuer reflex. It's probably more of a protective mechanism, more so than a regulatory mechanism. We spent a whole video discussing the medullary and the pontine respiratory centers, but our cerebral cortex can actually completely bypass these respiratory centers. You, you know very well that we can decide to hold our breath. We can go through voluntary breath holding. Or as I'm lecturing to you with the help of this video, I'm controlling when I breathe and how I breathe and how deep I breathe, etc. Or when we sing or speak. So we have control over our breathing by, you know, depending on our cerebral cortex, voluntarily controlling our breathing, I should say. And then we have another high brain center, the hypothalamus, which at, an, at a subconscious level can control our breathing, particularly via our emotional brain, better referred to as the lim limbic system. Just think of what happens to your breathing pattern when you're really, really angry at something or somebody, or when you're crying, or you're really happy, or for instance, you touch something really hot and you gasp for air. Changes in our body temperature can also change our breathing. When we have a high fever, we tend to breathe much faster. And remember, body temperature is very much regulated by our hypothalamus. So that leaves our discussion of the chemoreceptors and how they control our breathing, and I'll do that in our very last video.